Welcome to the Energy Upgrade Podcast. Hey, I'm Vanessa, and I'm obsessed with all things health, energy, entrepreneurship, motherhood, and living my best life. I'm here to give you actionable steps in reclaiming your energy and reconnecting with your power. I'm a certified integrated health practitioner and kinesiologist. I spent the past decade with a focus on skin health and age prevention while co-founding a network of medical aesthetic clinics on the west coast of Canada. After healing myself from burnout, mold, heavy metal, and all the things, I'm back to my passion for health optimization, and I'm lucky enough to coach high-achieving women just like you in finding their energy and life force back transforming their life so they can step into the highest version of themselves has energized me and inspired me to bring to life this podcast. Here, I'll talk about detox, lifestyle, mindset, supplements, breathwork, parasites, (laughs) and everything in between. I know you're so busy, so I keep it under 30 minutes. Thank you for being here. Cozy up and let's get started. Our time is now. Your energy is your life force. We want to be able to magnetize your wildest dreams. A liver detox is the fastest way to start healing. You can and you will. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of the Energy Upgrade. This is Vanessa, your host. And today I wanted to talk about something I believe is not discussed about enough and is the topic of alcohol. Now, why am I talking about this now? It's something that has been coming up quite a bit lately in my coaching calls. And I know it's related to the fact that spring is here, the weather is warming up, it's feeling, people are feeling alive again. And so hmm, that glass of rosé on the patio, maybe having some white wine with some friends is really sounding appealing. So let's talk about alcohol. And I want to make sure you understand me right here. I am going to come and share my relationship with alcohol and my thoughts on it. I will share also some facts about it. But at the end of the day, I'm not coming here with judgment. You do you, you take whatever resonates with you and you leave the rest behind. I know that every time I mention the topic of alcohol, woof, there's lots of emotions. People feel really attached to their glass of wine and I get it. I get it. But today I really want to share uh, my own experience because over the last, I want to say almost 18 months, maybe even more, I've really stopped drinking. I I think maybe in the last 18 months, maybe I've had two glasses, maybe, and I don't even know. Uh, Maybe I had like a couple sips at Christmas and I I can't even remember the, the other time. So it's interesting because as of course, I started doing all these detoxes and all these cleanses and really trying to heal my body from within and heal from you know, candida and mold and heavy metals and get rid of parasites, of course, I had to rein back on the alcohol, on the alcohol. And I, I really started noticing the impact it was having on my body. Now, if I rewind, like 10, 20 years ago, when I started drinking, like, really, I've always been sensitive to it I was really like I was always the one that would get sick after like even just like two glasses I would always be the one that was like literally a mess the day after like all my friends would be up and at it no problem and I'd be like why is it that I feel like I'm in a fog I have a headache I can't function my sinuses are blocked I always wonder, like, what is wrong with me? I can't, like, I have a really low tolerance. And so it's actually been a while that I really, really rein back my consumption. Like, I would have a glass, maybe two, but that's it. Um, Anywhere I would go. Like, I never would go beyond that. And that's probably been the case for the last almost 10 years. Um, But when I got my Ura ring, probably four years ago, it was so interesting to start actually noticing the the data behind it. 
So when I would have a glass of wine, I would notice that the, the day after the Ura Ring would show me how awful my night was. My sleep score tanked, my um, readiness score tanked. I could see my heart rate was much higher through the night. I could see that my heart rate variability was so low. Um, and I could see even sometimes my body temperature was higher. And I started thinking like, wow, okay, so there is really something to this. Like, I'm not making it up. Not only are my sinuses blocked, I have a headache the next day, I'm like barely functioning. But also, like, I can see that it's impacting my body on a health level. So I started digging a little bit into that um, to realize that, you know, alcohol, simply put, is a neurotoxin. You know, that that is just the case. It is the reality. And not only it's a neurotoxin, it's also a, a disinfectant, right? So when you drink alcohol, what does it do? It's literally disinfecting your microbiome and your your gut. Now, do we want that? <laughs> do we want to disinfect our microbiome day after day and every weekend? Not really, because what happens when we do that is we wipe away all bacteria, good and bad. But most mostly the good ones. And so when we do that, we leave more space for the bacteria to take over. Because guess what? When you drink alcohol, usually there's also a very high sugar load. And who's happy about that sugar? Hmm, parasites are happy. Candida is happy. It all keeps them nice and cozy in there because it's exactly what they want. It's feeding them what they want. So when you start understanding that, it's really interesting. For me, when I saw the data, I started putting one and one together. It really was enough of a motivation for me to be like, you know, do I really need this? Again, going back to my why, I want to feel my best. I want to live my best life every single day. Life is short. We don't know what's ahead of us. And so I don't want to waste a single day. Like I'm not, I'm not wasting any more minutes, any more days of my life. And that's just my personal opinion. But that is a big part of my why. And so I've noticed that alcohol was getting in the way. It really was. Like when I was having alcohol the next day, it was like I, I wasn't productive. I wasn't able to really get as much done. And that to me was really starting to be really frustrating, really annoying. It was getting in the way. And so I just decided to take radical responsibility for it okay, well, if I don't like how I feel and if I don't like how I'm not productive and I'm foggy the next day, well, there is only one solution and it's to just stop it. So I, I started by reducing drastically and then I really noticed that I wasn't missing it at all. Um, and I became so clear on my why that even with the social pressure, I didn't really care. And that is the key, my friends, that is the key, because that social pressure is real. Isn't it funny that alcohol is the only legal drug that it is socially unacceptable not to take part in? Isn't it weird? You know, when you're the one not having a glass of wine, it's insane how people will react to that. People who drink want to have someone to do it with. And it's like, well, I'm doing something bad. You got to do it with me because it's going to make me feel better. And I'm not saying it's bad necessarily. It's just, you know, it's not the best for your health. So for me, when I realized that now it's, it's so easy for me. I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm sticking. Like I'm going to have uh, a mocktail or I'm going to have just like sparkling water. And I actually don't miss out. And I always make a point of reassuring my friends or reassuring whoever it is that I'm with. Like, don't worry. I, I don't feel like I'm missing out. I'm okay. This is actually a choice I feel really, really good about. So don't worry about me. <laughs> it's, it's interesting how others always start being worried about you. This is another trick also I discovered, you know, as summer is coming, you're going to have more and more temptations, more and more social events that are really revolving around drinking. And so I invite you to 
really take a moment and maybe bring that into your next meditation. Like take a moment to reflect, what is my relationship with alcohol? Am I trying to numb something? Right? You know that glass of wine when you come back to work and you're you're cooking and preparing a meal and you're like, oh, I need this glass of wine just to decompress. Okay. Well, ask yourself here, like, what is it that you're trying to numb? Is it that you're so stressed that you're trying to reduce that stress? Is it that you're trying to avoid a situation? Maybe you're trying to feel better. You're trying, you know, what is, because alcohol at the end of the day is a coping mechanism. You know, it's, it's a coping tool. A lot of people, that's how it starts, right? So ask yourself, what is your relationship with alcohol? And maybe you've done dry January before. Why not doing it dry May, dry June? Like It doesn't matter. Try it any time. You could be doing just like one week. If you're someone who drinks every day, you could try doing it one week at a time, seeing how you feel. Have you been more productive? Have you had more energy? Again, I know you're here listening to the this podcast because you're wanting more energy. And the sad reality is that although alcohol may feel good in the moment, we know it's a trigger of anxiety, of so many other gut issues as well. And, and so we know that it's not product productive in the context of wanting more energy or wanting to boost your health. Another little trick, um, you know, aside from obviously reflecting um, about your relationship with alcohol, another trick in summer is to just, you know, those um, thermos glass glasses, like, you know, often you can use them for, for coffee, like coffee mugs, just bring those. It's so interesting if you're drink if you're with friends who are drinking and you're and you have that that glass even that mug even though it's like let's say sparkling water in it nobody's going to ask you a question because everyone is going to assume that you have a drink in there. <laughs> Try it. I swear. I've tried this so many times it works. If you're drinking a San Pellegrino from from the can and they can see it, then you're going to have a ton of questions. Or if you're drinking like, yeah, any sparkling water. But if you're drinking from a coffee mug, nobody's going to ask anything. So try that. That's like a little sneaky trick. But it works every time. It's so weird. Um, I also want to tell you, you know, some, there's a really interesting study that actually recently came out about alcohol that I thought like, wow, this is fascinating. So this was like a, a meta-analysis of more than 40 years of research that was done with more than 4.8 million people that were part of that study. And it was so interesting because it it showed that despite what we've been told, moderate drinking is not healthy whatsoever. You know, we've all been, we've all heard about the Mediterranean diet and how having a glass of wine per day is really good for your heart and and all those things. And I've always been skeptical of that. I've always been like, really? Okay, well, maybe it's the resveratrol in, in, you know, the grapes. But still, it's like, it's very surprising that taking a, a toxin every single day for the rest of your life would be beneficial. Like I had a really hard time understanding that. But now this study is showing that actually those studies were funded by the alcohol industry. Are we surprised about that? Mm, Not really. But this new study, which by the way, I'm going to be adding to the show notes. If you're curious, it is definitely worth reading. It's so interesting, but it is showing that even moderate drinking is, um, has, increases your risk of all cause mortality. So this is basically just to say that if you're having a drink every single day, just stop putting your head in the sand. It is not good for you. There are no health benefits that are related to alcohol, like none. So you have to take that into account when you also are considering your why and your relationship with alcohol. It really, really matters. Also, the American Cancer Society um, released, I think it was in 2021, um, some very interesting data showing that if you are drinking even just a glass of wine or even just 
on the weekends only, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that you are increasing your risk of seven different types of cancer drastically. There's even a study that came out of Spain that showed that any amount of alcohol has been shown to reduce the amount of white matter in the brain. And the white matter is really is really what keeps everything together. It is really the highway. It's what allows intercommunication of cells. Um, and it's also that study also showed that people who drink alcohol consistently have a smaller brain. Now, do we want a smaller brain if we're trying to have more energy, if we're trying to have more health, a better longevity to feel healthier as we age? No, like this, like alcohol goes against all of those healthy metrics. So again, I'm not sharing this to judge if you are drinking, not at all. All I'm trying to do is shed awareness because this is something that nobody talks about. Again, it's so socially unaccepted not to drink. It blows my mind. And so it's time to stop normalizing that. It's time to start reflecting on what are we using alcohol for? What are, and and if there's other ways we can we can start coping. So I'm just I just want to finish with that um, is offering you some tangible steps. Like if you are someone that relies on your glass of wine every day after work, for example, just to help with stress. If you considered, and I know this is gonna sound so cliche and you'll be like, are you kidding me? But <laughs> consider. Every time you want to reach for that glass of wine, and usually there's a pattern, like usually it's always around the same time. So try to trick yourself and trick your brain and go do a meditation, maybe like a couple minutes or five minutes before that time of the day. Even better, if you are not working from home and you're coming back from the office, do a meditation while you're still in the car. Even just like a five, 10 minute reset regrounding, feeling what needs to be felt in your body. That is what you need. You actually need to feel what is present and not stuff it down and not try to just numb it. Your body is trying to send you signals, right? So it's just about listening to it and taking those deep breaths and doing a meditation practice. You will be blown away by how great you'll feel after and how you'll suddenly have more power, more decision bandwidth to be able to be like, huh, you know what, that glass of wine today, I don't need it. Instead, I'm going to have a conversation with my child as I'm chopping my vegetables, or maybe I'm going to have a conversation with my spouse and ask him to help me out. And we're going to make dinner together and really focus on the mindful conversation. Do you see? Like it's, it's so interesting how alcohol actually strips us away from these precious moments with our loved ones as well, because we're not, even though we think we are, and even though I always have clients that tell me, oh, I have a high tolerance to alcohol. Well, you know, this is something that you've, you got your body used to, but nobody has a high tolerance to toxins. Like it will fill up your rain barrel. And if you haven't listened to episode one, where I talk about the rain barrel, please do so. Like alcohol, 100% will fill up your rain barrel and pretty fast. And if you're starting to wonder like, why is it that I have no energy? And why is it that I'm gaining weight? And why is it that my blood sugar is all over the place? Well, definitely a low hanging fruit, a place to look at is alcohol. So in closing, assess your relationship with alcohol. Try to see if you could do a meditation to reground reconnect and feel what needs to be felt and try to see if you can be really clear on why it matters to you to have energy and feel healthy because you might realize that as the summer months are coming in and rolling in you might feel less and less attracted to that glass of wine because you'll want to be more and more present. You'll want to enjoy every single day of sunshine because let's face it, in Canada, we have what, eight weeks of good weather? Like, I don't know about you, but I plan on maximizing those eight weeks and I want to be having energy for those eight weeks. So my friends, 
these are my thoughts. This is my own relationship with alcohol. Am I saying that I'm never going to have a glass of wine again? Not at all. Like I'm not, I'm actually just following my intuition, following my body right now in this season I'm in, I'm not attracted to it, but it might change. Uh, But for now, I'm not. And um, last thing I want to say, if ever you are a wine drinker, consider at least going for organic wines or nature wines, because those have less um, sulfites. Sulfites are another toxin that will fill up your rain barrel pretty fast. Um, So at least when you go organic or nature wines, um, you can have a safer alternative. Still not great, still is alcohol, but um, it is better. By the way, I wrote a blog on nature wines. If you're if you're new to that concept, I will link it also in the show notes because um, there there's really amazing things that are being done even here in Canada. Beautiful wineries that have done a really good job there. So I will give them a shout out. Um, and you know, I do love the experience. I do love uh, going to a local winery. Um, but it's, yeah, it's so interesting that now I just, the, what the impact it has on me is, is more important to me than the actual glass of wine. So reflection thoughts for you, my friends, again, no judgment here, hoping this is helpful, hoping it's, um, shedding some light on a topic that I find is not discussed enough. And maybe, you know, who knows, maybe you'll be exploring it, maybe going a week without two weeks, a month try it. You know, that's, that's what health is all about. It's a journey. We need to try things. We need to be courageous. And um, I know you are, I know you are because you're listening to this, which by the way, I want to thank you. I'm so grateful for all your weekly listens. Seriously. It warms my heart to see how many new people are joining my universe. And by the way, also thank you for writing those heartwarming reviews. If ever you feel inclined, if ever this podcast has brought you some awareness that you ha- you hadn't had before, if you've learned a thing or two, please let me know and let others know and go write a review. It's going to take you 30 seconds, but it will mean the world to me. And it's going to allow for this podcast to be seen by other high achieving women like you who are needing to hear this information. Again, thank you, thank you. And I can't wait to see you again next week. Hey, beautiful women. If the tips and tricks I'm sharing here on the show are getting you inspired, excited about the possibility of feeling like yourself again, maybe it's time we hop on a call. Did you know I offer free 30-minute discovery calls to anyone being curious about my health coaching approach, but most importantly, anyone feeling like their time is now. If you're feeling like you've had enough, it's time to turn things around. Well, let's chat. Find the link in the show notes and let's meet. The information shared on this podcast is for information purposes only and doesn't provide any medical advice. Vanessa Grutman does not cure, diagnose, or treat disease. Please consult your physician before trying any new protocol or product.